Hey, what's up everyone? Maury Croson here from the Performance Lab of California, and we have another mic breakdown for you today on Mike Rogers. Mike Rogers is the has the fourth fastest time, in, at least in terms of the uh, the United States in the in track and field. He ran a 9.89. 100 meter at 33 years old, which is absolutely insane. Wanted to go ahead and break him down and give you guys a little bit more information on how you can become a little bit more overall uh, better sprinter. And I thought what was interesting here is, and, and it goes into some things that, that we've talked about in the past, but also sheds light on some areas that I think we haven't gone as much into. Um, first, I'm going to go and let it go kind of fast motion so you can see what he looks like as he's sprinting. He is right there. So you can see as we're going all the way through, we'll watch the whole thing. He's right here. Tree Burrell in What's my email. Western fine. Roger six. One of my seven. clients mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and just whoops. Yeah, I'll just let it go. Won't mess with it. Go ahead and check out. What it looks like so I thought it was interesting he got off to a little bit of a slow strike uh, start there but then was able to, to catch up and really that last half 50 meters that he was running he really really did a, a very effective job there so um, we'll get back to where I was at we're at about 16 so what I thought was interesting is if you watch here the guy next to him uh, he's he's out in front he had a much better start and we're going to see we're going to they end up like being basically stride for stride and I just want to show Mike Rogers really passing um, you know, the guy next to him and, and how that ended up happening. So he goes and, and when he lands, and it looks like overall what, what ends up being the big differentiation is how he utilizes his um, left leg stride. And, and because the right leg stride ends up being about the same between both guys. Watch when they end up eventually sinking up here pretty quickly. So here they end up being pretty... Oh, wait. Uh, it's at right after uh, it's about onto this one so this is going to be the first kind of step where they end up syncing up and, and he's still a little bit behind mike rogers still a little bit behind so watch the transition and both of them look very very similar good knee drive good extension good pull mike rogers touches the ground a little bit before um the guy in the seventh right lane ends up touching then we see the transition this is where it first gets interesting or where you can start to see um the difference is if we watch how they they both go back here and how much they they both do a good job of opening up with their right shoulder so it looks very very similar in terms of how they're going up they're this a little bit higher knee height, knee drive here um, from one to the other but uh everything is pretty much timed out the same okay then we go to the next the other way but on the this side if we watch the arm drive look how mike rogers ends up pulling that arm just a little bit further back and because he's able to pull that that foot a little bit further back his foot ends up going in and uh, that arm a little bit further back he ends up just getting a little bit longer of a stride right because right here or actually sorry right here there you know you can see that he's a little bit behind and then this one he ends up catching him maybe by a little bit maybe like half a foot there and then going on this one He's getting closer to like a full foot there in front of him with a, a little bit better drive. Here, maybe about a foot and a half. But also, and notice again the symmetry and how they look. See how, how they basically have the same step, same transition. Everything is the same there when their, their feet hit the ground. But then we go back to the left side. And notice again, Mike Rogers opens up that shoulder a little bit wider there, which makes it so... His timing is better as he's rotating, and, and this is what I, what I think is really important: is as he's he goes, he transitions, transitions, transition. As he gets to the top, with really driving that elbow back, he gets a little bit more spine rotation to the left side in comparison to the guy next to him. Which, as he's transitioning, he just doesn't get as much of a rotation over to his left side. As and then when you go to the right, they both get a similar amount of rotation. See how they both open up similar amount of rotation. But here, under going left, Mike Rogers definitely has more rotation. And I think it's really important because I have a lot of guys that come in here that are trying to get faster. And one of the things that we talk about is as you're pulling back and as you're getting your, your arm back, you got to be able to get maximum extension, really be able to pull your that arm. And what we're seeing is as you pull your arm back, 
you know, there becomes a time where you, you have so much strength and so much power behind that, that arm pull that you actually create some, uh, a little bit of rotation in that T-spine, which then helps you in utilizing your obliques as you're transitioning through. So as you're pulling back, you really got to get to that end range and really create a lot of motion to be able to make it so your obliques end up turning in and you can create some activation within your core. I think that's a very, very important concept that you guys got to be able to understand. If you want to get faster, you got to be able to have so much pull at the top end of your your extension with your arm that it's causing your body to get into a little bit of rotation which then better utilizes the obliques because now what he can do is he has all these muscles built up here so that helps him in driving that left knee up right because he turns here so it helps in, in loading all this and then driving that left knee up now another important thing that that i was watching here is and i think this is a, another very very important concept is within the time that you're on the ground as a sprinter, the time that your foot's on the ground, so that time right here for Mike Rogers, boom. Within that time, you want to be able to achieve the maximum range of motion within your foot. Okay, and what that means is that when your foot's hitting the ground, if you're too much in straight flexion extension, almost like the, the guy next to him here, then you don't achieve uh, as much overall capability for force similar to when i watch throws what happens when you throw is the guys that seem to have a little bit longer release but still you know get the ball out of their hands quickly but that doesn't mean that their release isn't long they have a little bit longer loading time that's people with, with like pitchers talk about as, that as well how when they load they just have a little bit longer load and so it's the same thing with sprinting if you have a little bit longer load or, or more range of motion put in your load not spending more time on the ground but actually having some movement when on the ground you're going to be able to create more force whether it's side whether it, it's rotation because you see guys with, with their feet turned out and i think what mike rogers mike rogers seems to have very flat feet but with that does that makes it so when he lands on the outside part of the foot then he goes from having a lot of and i know this is going to be a, a, a intense concept but it's going from supination a lot of your weight on the outside part of the foot to pronation very rapidly and then goes from um, pronation to plantar flexion which is extending with the foot okay supination if you can look these up supination more weight on the outside part of the foot rapidly to pronation which is a lot of force on the inside part of the foot to then um, plantar flexion which is extending that all makes it so he's loading different muscles and able to create different amounts of power and force production which allows him to be able to exceed okay so watch when he's landing he lands outside part of the foot rapidly transitions to the inside part of the foot then extends and so all that time he's loading different muscle groups which then if you're able to then get your feet off the ground quickly you're just creating a, a lot more power utilizing a lot more strength um, I know this might be a concept that might not be easy to 100% understand, but it's so, so important. Listen to it a few times. Ask me some questions. Give us some comments. Let us know what you think. We want to be able to provide more value. I'm always looking to try to get better. I'm trying to help you guys get better. I think this is one of those videos where if you truly listen to the information, you could really gain a lot out of it and really help yourself get a lot faster as an overall um, athlete, whether you're a track runner, football player, baseball player, basketball player, whatever it is, you can benefit from looking, watching this video and getting the information in it. All right, guys, we will talk to you soon. Check out our speed program. Check out our jumping program. If you haven't gone on online, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a lot more stuff. Also, if you haven't, if you don't follow us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram at performance underscore labs. We're doing a thing. Send in a video to us. We do a free 60 second breakdown on our Instagram. Check it out. Talk to you soon watching this video i hope you really enjoyed it and if you did you can subscribe down below and that way you can get updates on any of the new videos that we get also if you want to you can check out some of our other breakdowns for speed and throwing we have exercises also jumping mechanics videos a lot of great stuff within our channel hope you enjoy